Hi everyone, this is Azze News, and here is the news for today. China firmly opposes India's ban on 118 Chinese apps. The Chinese Ministry of Commerce says China is deeply concerned about and firmly opposes India's ban on 118 Chinese mobile apps. India announces a ban on the use of 118 Chinese mobile apps in the country, describing them as a prejudicial to sovereignty and integrity of India, defense of India, security of state and public order. The apps include Mobile Taobao, Baidu, Sino News, Chemcard, WeChat Work and PUBG Mobile. The Chinese government has always required its overseas enterprises to abide by international rules and operate in accordance with the law. He adds that the Indian government's sections are hurting not only the legitimate rights and interests of Chinese investors and service providers, but also the interests of Indian consumers and the country's investments environment as an open economy. Gao says China hopes India and China can jointly safeguard that hard-won situation on cooperation and development, and India should make efforts to create an open, fair and just business environment for international investors and service providers including Chinese businesses. China opposes India's ban on Chinese mobile apps. Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying says during a regular news briefing that India's actions will hurt Indian users of the apps as well as the legitimate and legal rights and interests of Chinese companies. The Indian side announced that it will ban some advanced, useful and widely popular Chinese apps. I think that firstly, those who will be hurt by this will be the rights and interests of Indian users. Of course, this will hurt the legitimate and legal rights and interests of Chinese company. But the decision by the Indian side on this matter is an act that can only harm others without benefiting themselves. India has banned another 118 mostly Chinese mobile apps, including Tencent Holdings LTD's popular video game, PUBG, sitting data security concerns. The list also includes applications from Baidu and Xiaomi's ShareSafe. The ban announces a day after a senior Indian official says troops were deployed on four strategic hilltops after what New Delhi called an attempted Chinese incursion along a disputed Himalayan border. Complex emotions in Cambodia as former Khmer Rouge prison commander dies. Some Cambodians express regret that Khmer Rouge commander, known as a Comrade Duj, did not spend more time in prison after the war criminal who oversaw the mass murder of at least 14,000 Cambodians dead earlier in the day. I think this case is finished and now that he has died, then his court case is finished. Duj was the first member of the Khmer Rouge leadership to face trial for his role within a regime blamed for at least 1.7 million deaths in the killing fields of Cambodia from 1975 to 1979. I will never forget the horrible past or crimes that he committed, and he deserved to serve more prison terms, but now he has died. I can forgive him and his case is finished. Khmer Rouge Tribunal spokesman Ned Petkra says Kain Gwek Ev or Comrade Duj dead at the Khmer Soviet Friendship Hospital in Phnom Penh and he gave no details of the cause but Duj had been ill in recent years. I think this is the last minute for him. We had a bad history coming from him but now it is the end of his life. I regret that he is dead now. If he stayed alive, then we may still hear more of the history from him for the younger generation and people. But now he is dead. Everything is finished. In 2010, a UN tribunal found him guilty of a mass murder, torture and crimes against humanity at Walslang Prison, the former Phnom Penh High School which still stands as a memorial to the atrocities committed inside. He was given a life sentence in 2012. The first batch of passengers flying to China from Singapore since stricter COVID-19 requirements. According to an announcement published by the Chinese Embassy in Singapore, all passengers flying from Singapore to China starting are required to have a nucleic acid testing with five days of their departure date and test negative for the coronavirus. Foreign passengers need to email a copy of their valid passport information page, negative test result, and a signed health declaration to a mailbox designated by the embassy. After review of the application, and if they are approved, they will receive a scanned health statement 
with the official seal of the embassy. After arriving at the airport, the passengers need to show a nucleic acid testing authentication code or a statement on health condition issued by the embassy. If qualified, the passenger will be able to go for a check-in and fill in the customs health declaration form and a health condition form. Only passengers with a green health code are allowed to board. Unqualified passengers can either choose to change their tickets free of charge or get refunded for it. A staff from Singaporean government, Chinese embassy and the airline will also help them extend their residence permit in case they might need it. The Chinese embassy is putting a lot of efforts and work into these new requirements. After receiving a passenger's negative certificate for the nucleic AC test, they will review it as soon as possible and generate a green health code on WeChat for us. It took me less than two days from the day I submitted my application to be issued my green health code. The stringent new requirement has also been welcomed by travelers who said it gives them added security and a great sense of safety. Some people with the virus might be asymptomatic. I think the new requirement asking all passengers to get nucleic acid tests is a good thing for the public. Although it is a bit tough for some passengers, I'm all for it. First day of inquest into that of Aris Girl at Malaysia Resorts End. A Malaysian court conclude the first day of an inquest into the death of an Irish teenager after she went missing during a family holiday at a rainforest resort. The naked body of Nora Ann Kowering, 15, who suffered from learning difficulties, was found in a ravine near the Dusun Resort in Seremban of the Malaysian capital in August last year. Coroner Maimona 8 tells the court that the inquest aimed to answer questions including when, where did the deceased die, how and in what manner the deceased came by her death, whether there is any person who was criminally concerned in the cause of death. The lawyer representing Nora Quarian's family says they want to find out what is the actual cause of the Nora Ann Quarian's death. So they have given evidence that uh, their resort is an open concept resort where privacy is important, nature is important. Uh, so people who come there know that this is how, this is what to expect. Like, it's not like tight security and so on and so forth. And uh, also that uh, uh, they, uh, this kind of incident has never happened before, not even a theft in this kind of area in the 10 years they were operating. So basically that was the evidence that came out from the Dusun operator. That there was no, uh, as far as they are concerned, this is a situation where uh, it's an unfortunate incident that has happened. Uh, but as far as they are concerned, they, they, their view is that they, they, there was no culpability in their partner. Government's lawyer Muhammad Iskandar Ahmad says 64 witnesses are expected to be called during the two-week inquest at the Serenbang Coroner's Court. Ko Wearing was from London and had an Irish mother and a French father. The family will not attend the inquest, but the hearing is being streamed online. Too early to say anything now, but obviously we want to find out what is the actual cause of death of No Ryan. But it's, like I said, it's, it's very early for me to say something. We probably would be able to see uh, sometimes next week or thereafter some picture. Yeah. Like I, it's more for we want to know what is the actual cause of that. Although there's some autopsy report already. Yeah. That's all. Island of Jeju pummels with strong winds and heavy rain as Typhoon Maisak approaches South Korea. Heavy rain and blustering winds struck the island of Jeju as the Typhoon Maisak approaches South Korea. Typhoon Maisak brushed past Okinawa, picking up strength as it moved northward and intensified ahead of a forecast landfall in South Korea. Video obtained by Reuters shows high waves, storm surges and strong winds battering Jeju as many residents remain indoors sheltering from the heavy rain. Local media report winds up to 193 km per hour are recorded at Komejima Airport located 110 km from Okinawa overnight. The environmental group activists removing medical waste from river because lumen health risk. 
Since Indonesian records its first case of the novel coronavirus, medical waste pile up at the Cipewuchan landfill just beside the Cisadane River in Tangerang. The wall of the landfill reaches capacity and collapse, sending tons of garbage into the Cisadane Skaki green waters. Ade Yunus, fan of the Cisadane River rubbish bank, work with the volunteers to clean up the Cisadane River. Dirty syringes, used hazmat suits, masks and gloves are among the medical waste. Yunus and his team continue to find in the river. Sungai Cisadane ini air baku khusus untuk menyuplai air bersih ke seluruh wilayah yang ada di Tangerang. Nah, oleh karena itu, the river is a water source for the whole Tangerang area, and we are concerned about the sustainable of this river. We don't want it polluted with any waste, including industrial waste, which is dangerous, especially during this pandemic. If we find medical waste that is used to treat COVID-19 patients, it's even more dangerous. Ini kan kategorinya berbahaya. Nah, apalagi sekarang lagi musimnya COVID. Nah, kalau misalkan sampah medis yang kita temukan yang ternyata bekas penanganan COVID kan jauh lebih berbahaya. The residents who live just downstream report seeing a constant stream of medical waste washed up on the banks of the river, triggering fears that the coronavirus could spread amongst the local community. I worry about the kids getting infected with COVID-19 when they swim here. I'm anxious, that's why I always forbid my children from swimming in the river. Kayaknya kadang saya juga ngelarang sih jangan jangan kalau lebih baik mah udah jangan mandi berenang di situ. As Indonesia struggle to contain the spread of the coronavirus, now with the highest COVID-19 death toll in Southeast Asia, the nation's health ministry acknowledged the pandemic has caused an increase in the medical waste. Dan kemarin baru keluar ini yang kami dorong akibat permasalahan limbah medis adalah Permen Kes nomor 18. A new regulation has just passed that consists of the guidelines for the medical waste treatment in every health facility. We've been pushing for this regulation with the help from the Environment Ministry because of this issue. So our concept is medical waste treatment must be handled on a regional basis. At least we will have medical waste management in each province. Masalah permasalahan sehingga konsep kami adalah ditujukan pada berbasis wilayah. Jadi seharusnya minimal setiap wilayah di setiap provinsi itu punya pengelolaan limbah. The ministry also admitted the country lack treatment facilities, but says it is work to find a solution. Nah, jadi kalau ini limbah ini tersebar ke lingkungan-lingkungan penduduk. If this medical waste spreads in the residential area near the river, then potentially this could pollute the water that is used by the people there. It can potentially create the conditions for the transmission of COVID-19. Ini digunakan oleh masyarakat sekitar, dan ini tentu akan berpotensi terjadi penularan COVID di sana. Most of health facilities in Indonesia, including hospitals, currently rely on third parties to incinerate their waste. The government says that up to 1,500 tons of COVID-19 medical waste are produced across the country each day from the March until June 2020. The Thailand King restores title to once disgraced royal consort. According to the palace announcement, Thailand's King Mahavajira Longkorn restores the official titles and military rank to his royal consort nearly a year after she was accused of being disloyal and disappeared from public view. The announcement came as the Thailand is roiled by the anti-government protest, during which demands have also been made for curbs to newly expanded powers of the king, breaking a strong taboo in the nation where conservative tradition upholds the monarch as a semi-divine and above criticism. Sinanat Wong Vajira Prakdi, 35, last October has been stripped off the title Royal Nobel Consort in a palace statement that called her ungrateful in conducting the rivalry with Queen Sutida, the monarch's wife. A statement published in the government's Royal Gazette says Sinanat is unattained and therefore entitled to the Royal Nobel Consort title and all her previous posts within the palace. Thailand reports first domestic coronavirus case in 100 days. Thailand reports its first domestic coronavirus transmission in more than 100 days after a man recently jailed and with no overseas travel history tested positive in a Bangkok prison during a routine check for new inmates. Today I'm here to announce that Thailand has found a prisoner with COVID-19 who was in quarantine area before entering into the prison compound at Bangkok Raymond Prison. COVID-19. 
Authorities move quickly to locate and isolate people in contact with the 37-year-old and trace his movements over the past two weeks, including three places where he had work, the jail and the court at which he had appeared. Director of the country's Bureau of Epidemiology, Walilak Chaifu, says 34 prisoners that arrive at the same time as the man has been isolated and tested negative. Prison has separated 34 prisoners who arrived at the prison at the same time with him. They all got tested and no one is positive. The new case will be a setback for Thailand, which has been credited with keeping the highly contagious virus under control. Thailand is the second country in Southeast Asia to see community transmission resume following a lengthy containment period after the virus resurfaced in Vietnam. Typhoon Maisak brings torrential rains to South Korea. According to authorities, the typhoon kills one person when winds shatter a window in Busan, which see heavy winds as a storm struck place it squarely in its path. According to the Weather Agency and Interior Ministry, some areas on the South Korea resort islands of Jeju report more than 1,000 mm inches in rainfall, and typhoon left some 120,000 households without powers across the country. This is the ninth typhoon of the season and the fourth to hit the peninsula this year, affecting both North and South Korea. Meanwhile, Typhoon Hessian is forecasted to make its way towards South Korea. And that's all for today. Have a lovely weekday.